Going down that back straight, right round the turn there. But uh, this uh, young Santos also is just uh, 19 years of age. He's a huge talent. He ended up just 0.01 outside. He will go down as one of the greatest quartermasters from the Caribbean, if not the greatest, and one of the best all time. However, to get to this lofty status, he has had to overcome many obstacles. The death of his mom, the death of his coach, as well as a debilitating affliction. But what is in store for the future of Kirani James? Of course, he just did, performed remarkably well at the Olympic Games. And we look forward to hearing from him about his career and looking forward to what comes next. Of course, welcome to another episode of On The Blocks. I am Lee Levy and with me is the Major. Of course, remember to subscribe, like, and share our content. And of course, we will be sharing some of those comments with you at the end of the show based on your comments, the more positive ones. We're trying to <laughs> encourage positiveness um, on this um, podcast. Of course, so straight out of the blocks, welcome Kirani James. Thank you so much for joining us today. And of course, um, you know, the f straight out the blocks. I mean, looking back at the 2024 season, how would you characterize that season for you, given the fact that you were in probably one of the, the most competitive 400 meter finals ever at the Olympic Games? Wow. Yeah. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me. And yeah, I think uh, this year I would be satisfied with my season overall, you know, especially being still. Uh, being able to be competitive and to always kind of be in the fight. So yeah, I would be satisfied, even though I didn't get on the podium at this Olympic Games, it wasn't because of me not performing to my ability, but for every other guy is having great performances. So so yeah, I would say satisfied would be how I would describe my, my 2024 season. Mm. One of the things I was looking back at some of your past performances, Kirani, and of course 2016 when uh, when Wade broke the world record, I think he ran 43.74. Had you run that time in Paris, you would have been <laughs> just on the podium. <laughs> That's how ridiculous Paris was. Um, yeah. Give me a sense of what it felt like. I mean, you've been in some classic races. We've seen you win in Diego in 2011. You won a very competitive race in 2012 in London. You were in that amazing 400 meter final with the, four, the world record was broken 43 or three with uh, with Van Niekerk and of course with Sean Merritt back in 2016. How does this this last one compare to the rest of them? I mean, it's I think it's unique in its own ways and it's and it's very special, especially when you when you consider how much the event has even though a whole month, a whole now there are a lot more guys that are capable of running those times. You know, before in those years, you have, you know, at most three guys that would be running those times and being competitive, right? So, but now you mm -hmm. have, you know, five, six guys that could, that are capable of running those times. So, yeah, for whatever reason, the event has become more competitive. And which, is, for me, is a good thing for the event, for the sport, because now it's, it's, that's where the bar is now. So for every athlete going in, you know, okay, that's what it's going to take. If you want to get to a final, if you want to get to the podium, that's what you're going to, that's what you're going to have to run. You, you ran a 43 in the semifinals. What was your thinking going into the finals, given that you'd run that, that, that was your fastest time in, in, in several years. What was your thinking going to the final, having run that fast in the center? Because we know you can repeat, so we don't, we don't have to worry about that part of it. But in terms of whether you thought that, given how well you ran in the semis, whether you would have had a shot, a legitimate shot at the podium, which you did. I mean, the rest, the reality of it. But give me a sense of how you felt going into the final in terms of your, of your chances based on previous competitions. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. I was, I was filled with confidence going into the final. And but at the same time, it, it was because it was back to back where you get maybe about 24, 25 hours to recover. That also made it uh, very interesting, right? Because a lot of times before you had maybe a day in between the semifinals and finals, so you had a lot more time to recover, a lot more time to maybe just, you know, come back to a certain baseline where you're not overly excited or you're not. Um, anxious or anything like that. So, so yeah, I'll be honest. Like going into the finals that that night after the semi final, for whatever reason, like I just could not, you know, shut down. Maybe it was excitement. Maybe it mm -hmm. was a little bit of anxiety or things like that. But I find it difficult to even go to bed. Maybe I even 
maybe surprise myself running that time in the semi-final because you know sometimes when you run your best when you run your fastest you don't feel like it yeah <laughs> so that race where even though i know it's going to be competitive because obviously if you look at a guy like um like musala you know what he's capable of you know you know what he's going to bring so even though yeah that race it was it felt comfortable when you saw the time, at the same time, it was still, okay, wow, we really just did this. And like you just mentioned, mm -hmm. it was one of my fastest times that I ran in a long time. Yeah. So just to be able to come down from that, that night, even though you do all the recovery stuff, do your ice bath, you're taking your protein, you have a good dinner, all that stuff. Yeah. And then I feel very difficult. So I had a very hard time even just falling asleep. You know, yeah. I tried all kinds of things. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, like, yeah, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, yeah. I think it was just one of those moments where, you know, not making any excuses, but just to show you how those little things, you know, sometimes it makes a difference when, 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 when it comes to being at your best. And be, especially in my event, being able to go back to back. Yes. In those, in those races, mm -hmm. you know, especially with a limited amount of, of, of recovery time. Yeah, right. Right? Mm hmm so yeah so but at the same time it's not an excuse because i still had you know like i said 25 hours from from the semi-finals to the finals so but yeah, yeah but so but even then i was still going into the finals you know very confident i still think that i got enough rest and enough recovery yeah to be able to be competitive and i always knew that final was going to be pretty fast final yeah. I always is I wanna be able to give myself a chance in the last hundred eighty meters where okay, now it's a fight. No it's mm -hmm. you know, as you know, the the colloquial term that has been going around, who has the dog in there? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, and it's and it's just kinda of going from there. So yeah. Incredible Kiran, you seem to you're seemingly transcending eras. You know, you're back to 43.8s now. How much more do you feel like you have um, in you? Yeah, well, my plan has always to be up until 2028. 2028. That's Elliot. Yeah. Yeah, that was always my goal is to, is to get there, especially after, you know, missing a couple of years with my illness. Yes. It's almost, okay, I want to get those years back and still be competitive. Yes. But at the same time, I understand that, yeah, you know, the event is getting faster. Mm -hmm. Every four-year cycle, there's always, you know, one or two guys that come along that is, is incredibly talented, mm -hmm. right? You know, I'm getting older, and, you know, you can't argue against time and, mm -hmm. and all of these things. So, yeah, it's to get get there in a position where I could be competitive, in yes. a position where I could still, you know, um, you know, just be able to perform at that high level. And then we'll see what happens. But at the same time, you know, I have to be realistic. If for whatever reason things don't go that way, then I have to accept it and I have to be realistic in terms of where, you know, what what next is in store. Yes, yes. But I mean, coming off this Olympic season, um, how are you feeling physically? Do you feel like definitely you'll remain competitive in 2025? I mean, 43 eights and such, you know, that, that's no cakewalk. But I mean, for, for for you to have so much under your belt already, I mean, you, you've been winning world championships since what, 2011? Yep. You know, I mean, 13, 12, 13 years, you know. So, how are you feeling now going into 2025? Are you feeling positive coming off of all of this? You're back where you want. I mean, to, to me, you're always competitive. Once you're out there, you can't count Kirani out of a final, you know. So, I just want to know from you, how are you feeling going into 25? Yeah feel very, very positive. Mm -hmm. Even after the, like I said, with the Olympic final, even though I didn't get on the podium, yeah. there was still a positive feeling. You know, sometimes when you're, when you're competing and you're at that level and you don't get to the podium or things like that, you, sometimes you tend to be a little bit dumb. Like you tend to focus on the little minute details <laughs> like could make a difference. Yeah, you know, yeah. It was like, you know, to be able to keep those times Mm -hmm. Right, you know, still and to still be at that level. Oh yes, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. It gives it gives me a lot of confidence going in because Indeed. it shows, especially 
when you look at the last, you know, 18 months that I had where there was so much uncertainty when it comes to yes. coaching and the program yes. and all yes. those kind of things for a whole year. You know, to be honest, you know, you're always kind of wondering, even though the philosophy of the program is the same. Yes. When you lose somebody that, you know, has been training you for yep. years, mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not an easy adjustment. Like I said, even, you know, working with, you know, a, a new coach, Chris, you know, even though, like I said, we follow the same philosophy and the same fundamental things, mm -hmm. it's a little element of doubt. So even though the whole, going through the whole season, yeah. it's a little, that little, you know, I might, doing the right things? Am I taking enough rest? Am I doing enough rest? Am I doing all these all these little things? Yes. It, it's, it's a process when you talk about it with your coach, you talk about it with people that you're close to. Yeah. And I think having those performances at the Olympics just kind of validates that we've been doing the right thing. Definitely. So it, the new season now is just building on that, right? And not having those little doubts or those little, you know, um, all the moments coming where you 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 wonder where you're going to be. So having mm -hmm. those performances, especially at the Olympic Games, they almost like they happen at the right time. Yes. So it gives me a lot of positive. It puts me in a positive mindset going into next year. So you're saying like you 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 are fully confident now in the program, because you you know human nature. You have doubts, you know, in the transition and everything. But but now as you say, for, come on, Kiran, forty three eight, you you have to be you know confident in the in the program now. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't say I wasn't confident in the program mm -hmm. because like I said it's the same philosophy. It's almost the same thing, but at the okay. same time, yeah. easy, you know, when you have somebody overlooking a program for the last, for your whole professional career and then that change. Mm -hmm. The reason why I say the element of, there's a little bit of element of doubt creep in. It's one thing yeah. you make a conscious decision to go in a new direction. Yes, yeah. If you say, you know, consciously say, you know what, this program was great, but I'm moving to another program. Now, mm -hmm. all of a sudden, now, that <laughs> only is on you. So, yes. you, you have no choice but to be confident in the new program anyway. Indeed, indeed, right? indeed. But when, it's, but when it's out of your hands, mm -hmm. and then you have to make that adjustment, no, it, it, it's yeah. easy for it's going to invite a lot of, a lot of doubts, a lot of questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So even yeah. though you know the program, you know the philosophy, what you're doing, Yeah. just like you say, human nature and human mindset. And yeah. Like you just have that little bit of, am I doing all the things that I could do mm. to make sure that I reach the levels that I want to? Kirani, mm. what I wanted to ask you, you mentioned something earlier on. Of course, the you lost your coach. Harvey Glance, who has been with you right through your college days, right through your professional career last year. Just a couple of years before that, 2019, I think, you lost your mom. And then, of course, I think it was in 2016 that you were diagnosed with grave disease. You've overcome all of those obstacles, which suggests to me that you're mentally, you're probably stronger than most, because not very many people would have been able to endure those kind of losses, especially for the people closest to you, your mom and coach Glance, who, as far as I could see when you came to Jamaica for races in 2017, that was almost like a father figure to you as well as a coach and a, a mentor. What was that like for you in those respective moments? And how, what did, how did you position yourself to then rebound from those respective situations? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, it was, it was tough. You know, especially all those moments. And I always say in those moments you need you always need to have good people around you that can help you through those through those times. Mm -hmm. Right. So even then, you know, like I said in twenty seventeen with diagnosis grades, you know, my coach he was right there with me. So all the doctors' appointments, through everything when we started back training. Yes. You know, he was like he was doing some of the runs with me. Right. So you know, you know, and, and 2019, you know, I had to go home, spend time with my you know, my siblings and the rest of my family, you know, until, you know, my brother, you know, he came up to me and he said, hey, man, you know, it's time for you to go back and train and get ready for, for a world championship. So when you get that kind of, um, just that kind of confidence and that, and that, um, and that feeling, it helps you through those, 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 those moments. And yeah, like going through, you know, even last year it was tough. But like I said, you know, when you have good community around you, people that could help you um, go through all those moments, whether it's to help you train, 
you know what it helped you on a spiritual level help you to all those things so i always say it's important to mm -hmm. hear people that could give you that positive support yes and, and especially when you know it is unconditional yeah I wanted to ask you a quick follow up to that. I remember watching you at the, at the Drake Relays when you finished Bid on the Track. That was when, that was when I think the announcement came that you were suffering from grave disease. Because I was watching the race and I was like, that's not Kirani. Mm -hmm. How long before that did you start to feel the effects before mm -hmm. you were diagnosed? I would say when, when, you look, when I look back at it, you know, maybe a couple of weeks, maybe two or three weeks. I think you really started really at Grenada Invitational. Mm -hmm. mm. My first, that was my first event. And it pretty much shocked it, you know, chalked it up as, you know, it could be a little bit of nerves, anxiety, because it's the first time as a professional, especially after all these years, you're competing in front of your whole mm -hmm. crowd, right? And yeah, so sometimes, you know, sometimes that, you know, get a little bit of nerves when, when you have those kind of experiences, right? And then going back, you know, I even had a doctor's appointment scheduled, I think, for like the week after Drake or something like that, mm -hmm. just, to, just to get a checkup to see what happens. So after Drake, especially just me, how long it took me to recover after the race, I think, you know, my coach saw it, he was like, you know, something is not, it's not adding up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we went, you know, went to see your trainer at, at at, at Alabama that you know we were still good friends with um, and then from there we went to the doctor then we got an initial diagnosis but at the same time it could be a lot of a lot of things you know where he did some blood work and say it could be A, it could be B, it could be whatever it is, cancer or anything mm. like that and he took that you know he's also a specialist and then a specialist look at it and say okay this is what this is what it is you had about 18 months off before you came to racers. Was there a period within those 18 months? It was I had a 16 or 18 months. I'm trying to remember. It was, a, it was a good amount of time. Did you actually yeah. think about hanging it up at the time? Was it was was retiring a thought in your mind, or were you still fighting to get back to the Kirani James that won world titles in 20, 2011 and Olympic titles in 2012? Yeah, absolutely not uh, thinking about retiring. I think understanding the situation, speaking to doctors, specialists, these kind of things, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it was just about being patient and getting back. I think that's mm -hmm. the main thing. Not try to rush it, not try to feel like, okay, you have things, something to prove or anything, but just try to take your time, get back, listen to your body, especially, mm -hmm. and just try to go from there. But, not, but never in my mind where retiring ever. Cross your mind. You mean to ever cross my mind. Maybe if I was in my, you know, just not interacting with my coach or friends or, or people like that, maybe it would have happened. But just having the confidence of them, like, okay, we understand what it is. Mm -hmm. This is what it's mm -hmm. going to take to get back. So, yeah, let's let's now make that the goal in terms of getting back. Okay, cool. Kirani, on a more positive note, what does the talent pool look like uh, in Grenada right now? Will we see a boom? Four by four for twenty five hours before <laughs> twenty eight. <laughs> no, well, well, I hope so. I think right now, realistically, when you look at the top level right now, I think our best chance would probably be a mixed relay. So mixed relay, say, okay. Four or five on either side, men or women. I think for us, yeah. no, it would be tough. Maybe in, you know, if something great happens in five, four or five years, it could happen. Yeah, but if you cannot. You know, the next two or three years, I think a mix really would be would be our, our best chance to be competitive. Yeah, you know, I think I think you, have a, you had a character team that won, yeah, last yeah. year or the last character games, I should say, earlier earlier this yeah. year. Yeah. Yeah. I think so I think so. Yeah. But but yeah, so we do have um, a good uh, pool of talent, especially the younger ones coming up. Right. We have that is. Is very talented, so no, it it is figuring out the framework of how to get them to the top top level. Right, right. What you... that look like, and trying to figure out okay, what is the best avenue for them uh -huh. to have that natural progression where they could get to 
to, to the top level where you see, you know, Lindon and Anderson, mm -hmm. myself, where you have a lot more at that top level. So everybody, sometimes the events, because mm -hmm. at events is trying to figure out what the right avenue is. It's, right. Everybody's have the same journey, the same pathway. Yes. Let's figure out what is the best for them, whether that's to stay home or to, to, to go to the US or right. to Europe or wherever to figure out, okay, how do we make sure that we give them the best opportunity to, to get to the top level? How do they get a chance for scouts to see them, though, Kirani? Yeah, well, I think you know, one of the biggest is the Curry Flag. Oh, the Curry Flag Games, okay. Yeah. yeah, so, I mean, as, as you guys know, I mean, all the, 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 the schools come down and they watch Curry Flag. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think right now, especially with the way technology and social media is, it's a lot easier for coaches or scouts to access a lot of these clips of these these athletes performing. Mm -hmm. so I think it's important. And it's also important to just have relationships with people in different areas, right? Whether that on a professional level or that is on a collegiate level, I think it's important for people back home, whether it's the schools or the clubs or even just the government or the ministry sport or the athletic association olympic committee yeah. it's important to have relationships outside so that way you know you 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 have, you have, you have a vast network where you know all of these athletes are getting exposure mm -hmm. how integral are you to that process kirani i mean obviously there's a stadium in Grenada that's named after you you're obviously a big inspiration to the young athletes coming up um do you have that kind of direct contact with some of these emerging athletes to kind of help guide them along the way towards a a path? Yeah, so, so one thing I'm involved in, we do have a, a Grenadian or, or, or Olympian association that, that, mm -hmm. that was just recently formed, which I think is a great avenue to connect, you know, okay. with not just, you know, <laughs> past Olympians from Grenada, but, you know, prospective ones and to figure out, okay, how can we as a group yes. can help athletes get to that level? Mm -hmm. So that's one aspect where I think is, is important. Like yeah. I say, at the same time, it's just having, you know, proper dialogue with people that actually make a difference. So, like the ministry, the athletic association, mm. Olympic committee. Yeah. As long as they are, you know, um, receptive to these, to these things, to the experiences of, you know, what athletes go through, then I think there's, mm. there's more than enough athletes that are willing to help in those areas. Mm. Yeah. Are you president for this organization, Kirani? No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, no, people, but Kirani is one of... It, it is a pleasure to be interviewing a Kirani because I've, I've watched it over the years. You, if, if there was any person to go for, you know, the, the, the president for the Athletes Association, it would be Kirani. Kirani, after almost every race, ensures that he goes to each and every one of the competitors, you know, and shakes, and shakes, and their and shakes them, and shakes right. their hands. Tell, tell us a little about that, Kirani. What, how, where, where, where you must have all that up from? You know, because regardless of how tired you are, 43, whatever it is, you still find yeah. the energy for the greet everybody. Yeah, I, I remember, like, even when when I was younger, I remember there was, like, in the CUT games, I think we had, like, that was way back, you know, and even then, I remember, I yes. think there, 400, I think I got second in the 200, or the Jamaican that beat me. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I remember his name, I think he was... Or something like that. Yes, that was that was that was maybe that was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> like maybe like 17, 18 years ago. Wow. wow. Yeah, I'm a character. Wow. Yeah, that, that wasn't even character. That was CUT games. That was oh, yeah. Okay. During that teachers game, that was not even character. Yet. That was like maybe that was four or thirteen. C O C U two. Yes. Just appreciating the, the the talent of everybody else. Yeah, man, right? it is admirable. <laughs> Yeah, to, 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 to be at that level, we all know it takes a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think there's, there's always some kind of secret thing that's happening. You know, it's just hard work, dedication. Right, right, right. So if you get to that level, mm -hmm. you have those attributes and you have a level of talent, you know. So for me, it's just validating that level of talent, that level of dedication to a right. competitive, whether they win or lose. Yeah. And then at the end man, if we could all you know, try to make this sport better, then, then we all win. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why not appreciate their talents and 
yeah and the hard work and all of that too so so yeah that, that, that that's what it's all about it's not, yeah you know it's, it's just appreciating what's you know that are competing at this level because we know how hard it is definitely yeah. what's the fan base like in grenada uh kirani is it like when when things are rosy as as opposed to when things are not going so so well what, what, what's the fan base like what's their response yeah, well, I think you 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 have a lot of people that just like every fan base mm -hmm. <laughs> are, you know, um, emotional, yeah. right? And sometimes in the moment it could be emotional. So sometimes when you interact with people, sometimes you just have to talk to them and explain to them like, hey, this yeah. is what's happened. This is how it's going. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And I get them to understand like, yeah, like it's not just you know looking at a piece of paper and seeing a time or seeing a place. Yeah. And see, that's what happened. Yeah. Now at the same time, you have people that understand that. Mm -hmm. you know, I have a lot of friends, a lot of colleagues back home that understand that. Right. That you know, see, you know, sometimes just the assurance of saying, "Hey, man, you, you've done so much for us. You don't need to do anything for us. <laughs> you know, whatever you do, do for yourself." Yes. Yeah. Kiran, I want to ask you a couple of questions, two questions, because almost all the time, the, the idea of you when you were in when you're at character when you're destroying fields at character and running mm -hmm. 45s when 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 at that time when adults were running 45s and 44 highs yeah. did you imagine the career you would have had no i mean was that was that the vision for you back then and secondly do you regret not being able to run a four by four with brilliant captain and Rondel bartholomew hmm. <laughs> Yeah, to the, to the first question, no, I would have never imagined uh, you know, having looking at things that far down the line. It was always about trying to improve every year, and especially just giving myself an opportunity to whether come to you know university in the U.S. to further education, to further your experience, to, to, to get exposed to a different you know life. Yeah. But that was kind of always, and then when things progress, I would say after maybe 2012 Olympics, I would say that's when you really start looking at it as mm -hmm. a career. As okay, what can I do to make sure okay. that I'm I'm in this for as long as I possibly can and be consistent for as long as I can. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, the second question would be, yeah, I think there is a missed opportunity in there where we could have had a good team, mm -hmm. where maybe we needed, you know, maybe two other guys that could that could help us, mm -hmm. but. Yeah, I mean, it, it's um, yeah, it was something that I think um, would have been possible, and, and yeah, it, it's it's a shame that it did not happen. Yeah, because you could have put me on the foot leg and you know, still run some incredible times. Yeah, right. I mean, Rondell was, as you know, Rondell was <laughs> superiorly talented, and Brilliant wasn't bad himself before he got himself into some trouble a few years back, yeah. and and yourself. That was just one or two athletes shot of a of a two fifty four, two fifty five team. It was ridiculous how good you guys were. Yeah, absolutely, and I think what that would have, you know, happened. No, you 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 would have seen a lot of more guys try to emulate that. I would have give them that uh, a specific goal to achieve to, to try to be on a four by four. You look at what's happening right now with Botswana, right? Yeah. That with Makwala and a couple other guys, you know, years before, and now you look at them. They're competing for Olympic goals. So mm -hmm. sometimes all it takes is just putting that those pieces together the first time, and then that could just have a ripple effect on generations to come. All mm -hmm. right, Kirani, we're virtually all the time, but we want to thank you so much again. Look, I don't know if you know this. I know. I mean, we've spoken for years. You're, we're friends. We are friends on Facebook, and I've never said this to you before. But if there is any athlete in this world who I truly admire, it's been you because of. Two things. One, your consistency in performance yeah. at the highest level mm -hmm. and your absolutely amazing humility because there are many athletes in your shoes mm -hmm. who grow into organisms, I can call it, that you would not recognize once they discover fame. Mm -hmm. But to see how you have managed yourself and, and maintained yourself over the past decade and a half yeah, man. has been truly extraordinary. I just want to say I am one of your biggest fans. I Likewise. don't say to people, but I, I am, and I, and I will continue to support you until you decide to hang up those spikes. So on behalf of the crew, Bertie, I would just, just you know, keep on doing the good work and hopefully you will find the podium again in, in September in Tokyo. Honorable. 
<laughs> so, so I appreciate uh, the kind words. Very, go. very nice of you to say. And thank you guys for having me. Uh, All right, Bridget, take it easy, of course. We will catch up soon, of course. We'll be monitoring your progress during the course of this season. All the best, brother. Mm. Ah, so that's Kirani James here, of course. Always a pleasure talking to an amazing athlete. And mm. one of the things, as I said before, mm. just his humility. Yes, man. You know, yes, because man. there are a lot of athletes who want to get to fame. You, you don't even recognize them anymore. Get up, start exhaust, this is a guy who all kind of things. Yes, man. Gold, silver, and bronze at the Olympics. Honorably. World Championship Honorable. gold, world championship silver. Mm -hmm. You know, some of the, one of the fastest men ever to run the event. Yeah. And, you know, he's... Always grounded. Even keel, yeah, Always man. grounded. Yeah, right. And of course, last week we had um, uh, Jamaica Archer from the Bahamian Athletic Association mm -hmm. on the show. And of course, we uh, we appreciated your your reaction to that interview as well. You know, of course, uh, we have a comment that I can't see right now, but I think Major can see that. Oh, uh, this looks like a will three seven two. Always great and informative. Big up to uh, A Will. Keep keep supporting and, and remember to like, share, and also subscribe. Yeah, yeah, man. So we really mm -hmm. truly appreciate the support and of course continue to support. We have some other big interviews lined up for you. Hopefully, we'll be able to pull them off in the weeks to come. Definitely. But um, you know, until next week when we we'll hopefully we'll be back with another episode mm -hmm. of Out the Blocks. This is Leighton Lee on behalf of D Major himself, whose song. What's the name of the song? Is number oh, one? Caravan of Love. Number one in, number one in New York. Yeah, Congratulations. Man. Until Blessings. next week, saying bye bye, be good, and we'll see you next week on Out the Blocks. Love. Adios.